<laughs> right, Josie has traded her trainers for a pair of boots, a safety helmet, miner's lamp and harness, all in search of a hotel experience like no other. If you're looking for an iconic hotel, you may immediately think of Raffles in Singapore. The Plaza in New York may be Dubai's Burj Al Arab. But you can forget all of those because it turns out that North Wales is home to one of the most unforgettable hotels on earth. Or under it, for that matter. This remote part of the Snowdonian countryside is the location of Deep Sleep, which lays claim to being the deepest subterranean hotel on the planet. And this is the front door. Hello? I'd like to check in, please. Well, before I'm allowed to check into this hotel, I need to get kitted out, meet my guide Mike... Mercy, Looking good. Too. ..and begin our journey into this vast slate mine. So, Mike, how long is the descent into this hotel? So, it's going to take us about an hour and a half or so. It's a bit of, a, bit of an adventure to get there. Is there like a valet service to get help with your bags? <laughs> How deep is a hotel? So it's pretty deep. It's 1,375 vertical feet from the surface to deep sleep. 1,375? Yeah. <laughs> So how deep really is 1,375 feet? Well, if you were to take the shard and pop Big Ben on top of it, then turn them upside down, you'd still be nearly 50 feet short. When they say deep sleep, they really mean it. But a journey this far underground is not without its challenges. So we've got a little bit of an adventurous section coming up, Josie. OK. We need to cross over that bridge in order to get to our destination. How big's the drop? It's about 40 metres or so, so uh, big that... enough to not want to fall down. Oh, my... So... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Your left foot on there, if you can. I got it, I got it. You got it? Perfect. Oh, God. And then... I didn't think it'd be like this, I'll be honest. <laughs> hey. Oh, amazing. I'm alive. Nice one. I'm alive. <laughs> When was this mine last used, you know, like a proper working slate mine? So it opened up in the mid-1800s and it was actually worked up until the late 90s. But um, in its heyday, it was the, the biggest slate mine in the world. So every single passage that we walk through today and every single space that you see has been excavated by hand, which is incredible when you consider how big this place is. So we've, uh, we've reached the central haulage incline now, Josie, and uh, this is the... Uh, where all of the slate would have been taken up and out. So you see the old railway tracks there where the carts would have run all the way down through the mountain, right to the lower levels. This central shaft allows us to travel quickly down through the many levels of the mine. But while it may be quick, is not always graceful. Oh, that was not the shot that I want this morning to use. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the journey, there are reminders of the intense work that was carried out in this harsh environment. That is original. That is original. Still even Still moves, moves a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they built them well. Wow. <laughs> what else is impressive is, uh, is this. It's a, it's a tool, actually. It was their, their version of a drill. You'd tap it down, give it a twist, lift it, tap it, twist it, and you would repeat that process until you got about that deep, and of course, at that point, they knew where the hole was, so what they could then do was blow their candles out and work in the dark for the rest of the day so that they didn't waste their candles. Wow. Yeah. What? Can we just switch ours off so we know what that's like? Of course, yeah, go for it. All right. Pitch black, isn't it? And they were like this for hours? Literally for hours, yeah, often seven, eight hours at a time, just drilling the rest of their hole. Oh, it really makes you appreciate the light, doesn't it? After over an hour's descent, we finally reached the door to the hotel. Finally got to my room. With an electricity supply, running water, four twin bed cabins and a romantic grotto room carved straight into the rock, this is a whole lot more comfortable than I was expecting. This is amazing. It's cool, isn't it? Mike, it is so cosy and comfortable down here. I can totally see why people would want to come and stay. How did you get all this down here? As you can see, there's so much timber and, um, and all sorts of stuff, so it all had to be brought down. Basically, the route that we descended down, 
Um, we've got a few um, zip wires that we've set up so we can lower some of the stuff down rather than carrying it all the way. Can't actually believe this. All my messages have come through. I've actually got Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, we ran some Wi-Fi down here. So there's some blinking long cables that come all the way down from the surface so you can always be connected to the outside world. I think I am sold. Well, after a long and tiring walk to my room, I'm pretty exhausted. Time to get unpacked. Left my phone charger in the car. And tucked into bed for a really deep sleep. I've been asked to do a lot for this morning, but this is literally the lowest I've ever been. Time for me to get an early night. Good night. Don't think I needed the eye mask, did I? She is so brave. She is brave, yeah, yeah. It made me is. feel a bit funny watching that, but then so, actually when you get down there, like the rooms were incredible, but still. You could know. not do that, could I don't, you? I, I don't think I could, no.